Hello, and a very warm welcome to Monocle on Design Extra. It's the show brought to you by the team behind Monocle 24's dedicated weekly design show. I'm Josh Fennett. Now, each week we open up the dusty armoire of design to dust off a topic that we think deserves just a little bit more attention. The 18th century is known for the Enlightenment, a few bloody revolutions, and of course the work of Britain's most eminent and enduring cabinet maker, Thomas Chippendale. His journey to prominence has been documented by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York in an exhibition entitled Chippendale's Director, The Designs and Legacy of a Furniture Maker. Monocle contributor James Rinal popped along to learn more about how Chippendale whittled his way into the history books. It seems that there's never a quiet day at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. A weekday morning here and it's already packed. Tucked away on the second floor is an exhibition on Thomas Chippendale, marking 300 years since the birth of the furniture designer. Three centuries on, the artisan still commands respect. Antiques fan Bob Klimecki visited the Met to check out Chippendale's handiwork. He was spoiled for choice. Uh, it would be hard to say, but I certainly like the... Uh the Chinese fretwork chair, which is just marvelous, and of course the, uh, the tea table. And there's a chest of drawers in the other room that I'm particularly fond of. Uh, this, of course, is probably the most renowned piece in the, in the, in the gallery, um, the Philadelphia piece, but there's a chest in the other room that I just find absolutely exquisite. So, what is it about Chippendale that made him a household name back then, and, indeed, a brand that lives on today? For that, I asked Elise England, one of the show's curators. Chippendale was not only a great maker of cabinets, she said, but he was also a savvy businessman and marketing genius. Unlike his rivals, Chippendale published his designs in a book called The Gentleman and Cabinet Maker's Director, or simply The Director. That, she said, put him ahead of the game. As we were putting this project together, I started to really understand more about his you know, entrepreneurial side, the fact that he was only 36 when he took out massive amounts of debt to create um, you know, the, the book itself, and then on top of that to create a workshop to produce the um, pieces for patrons that were very interested in his work as a result of the director being published in 1754. So I think that the combination of his amazing designs, his ingenuity in terms of packaging these you know, for the public in this book, but then on top of that, the entrepreneurship that he you know, possessed at a time where England was on its rise. I mean, this is the mid-18th century. There's um, a tremendous amount of mercantile wealth as a result of the transatlantic trade and the expanding British Empire. You know, you've got colonies in the Caribbean, colonies in North America. And Britain is just, you know, expanding its geographic reaches. But at the same time, too, um, people are really um, expanding their own worlds. Their lifestyles are increasing. Um, they have more wealth to basically spend on clothing, on material goods like, say, silver or imported things um, like porcelain. And they're creating new environments for themselves that reflect, you know, this aspiration of becoming, you know, people at the top of the social heap. Rich folks would come to his store in St. Martin's Lane in London and Chippendale could deliver. From Gothic revival chairs to Chinese-style cabinets and complete home suites, Chippendale could knock it up for you. They could create frames for furniture, they could upholster furniture, they could do specialty um, decoration like inlay work. Um, he could create gilded frames for looking glasses. Um, there was, you could basically go to his shop and buy everything you possibly needed in terms of household furnishings. So he, he was truly inventive that way, and we know he had special talent that maybe exceeded those humble beginnings in, in a place like Ali, that he was really looking for a much bigger pond um, to realize that potential he had. According to England, his items were top-notch and his workshop was heaving. His elaborate and decorative designs were snapped up by the elites of British society. But thanks to his book, The Director, the Chippendale name travelled abroad and orders came in from the colonies. The show's other curator, Femke Spielberg, describes the famous chunky book. 
Well, what is so interesting about it is its size, the fact that it is such a big tome, which was completely uh, unprecedented in England before that. There were several other people who published some furniture designs in the 1740s. Uh, Matthias Locke, Henry Copeland, um, Matthias Darley, who would become Chippendale's business partner. Uh, but they were all very uh, modest publications. They had six or 12 designs, giving you a sample of what you might want to um, buy or, or have made. Um, but nothing had been that comprehensive. And what we think that Chippenau looked towards is actually kind of books that were published on the continent at the same time, which we call oeuvre catalogues, which are books of the entire of, of one furniture maker, of all things they made throughout their entire life. So that's 30, 40, 50 years of, of workmanship in one book. And they were often published after someone died or really at, towards the end of their careers. And the amazing thing is that Chippendale basically starts his career by saying, I can design just as many things and I haven't even started my business yet. So I have that many ideas. I have plenty of ideas for you, so come to me. Of course, publishing your designs does present a problem. Chippendale's work was imitated relentlessly. Thanks to that and some non-paying customers, the business eventually went under. But the name lives on and if you go to the right auction house today, so does the furniture. Spielberg again. It is actually really great quality furniture often. And if you go to a local auction now, you can actually buy uh, a Chippendale dining set for the equivalent price of an Ikea dining set. And I guarantee you that you have more character and more quality from the Chippendale than you do from the Ikea set. The show runs at the Met until the 27th of January 2019. For Monocle 24, I'm James Rinal. The exhibition, Chippendale's Director, The Designs and Legacy of a Furniture Maker, is on at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and runs until January the 27th. You've been listening to Monocle on Design Extra from the team behind Monocle 24's weekly design show. Don't forget you can listen to the full half-hour instalment on Tuesdays at 1900 London time or you lucky things. Download the podcast at any time thereafter. And remember, if you can't wait, there are always more delights to uncover in the pages of Monocle magazine, our many beautiful seasonal newspapers and of course the books we publish in association with Gestalten. Sadly, that's all we have time for. This show was produced by the ever-patient Christy Evans. I'm Josh Fennett. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.